All right, all right. Recording's rolling. Appreciate everybody who is joining here on a Tuesday night. The day is 10 4 2022 We're going to be looking at a lot of pairs here today. Got a lot of setups coming into fruition as far as what I'm looking for into Wednesday, Thursday of this week. Uh, we were talking about XAU. We're going to go over that. Uh, we're going to go over Bitcoin. We're going to go over ETH. We're going to go over some GBP and ZD, some higher time frame setups starting to come into, uh, into play for this Wednesday to Thursday midweek possible reversal that we could be seeing on a lot of these pairs right here. But just wanted to give you guys a little bit of analysis, a little bit of updates as well when we get started. But before we get into XAU, before we get into these Forex pairs, I wanted to start it off with some crypto. We'll look at Bitcoin. We'll look at ETH. We'll talk about the updated um, kind of setup, what we're looking at, what we were talking about in last stream. And then we will go ahead and go from there. So going to Bitcoin, let's just start off with Bitcoin as our first. I want to talk about the behavior that had happened down here, why I was looking for delivery up into these areas right here, this area of supply that had caused a new low. Then we will talk about how that made sense, how we could look to catch certain trades like this, and how we could not be confused trying to take trades to the downside within these areas right here, even though our overall structure is bearish, right? We need to understand that as smart money, as institutional traders, we're always looking for more than one confluence. So if you're just trading based on market structure, then you will be manipulated. If you're just trading on uh, based on supply and demand, you will be manipulated. If you're just trading utilizing uh, the 200 EMA, then you will be manipulated. But if you start to bring things together, meaning you're trading with the 200 EMA plus market structure plus maybe fundamentals, right? You have more confluences coming into play for a single pair, single narrative, single story that's coming out. Then you start to gain more confidence and gain the ability to start having that profitability that you seek. Um, again, I talk about indicators. It's not wrong to use them, right? I don't think it's wrong at all. But if we can use multiple confluences then that's exactly what it is a profitable trader is somebody who can set out their narrative set out their plan and trade based off of their plan no matter the eccentric factors based meaning if somebody's telling you i'm shorting then you're not shorting just based off an emotional decision right you're shorting based off of your plan based off of your rules so i kind of want to get into that narrative we'll talk about what happened right here and we'll talk about how we could look to catch these type of trades to the upside on this move like this so if we want to bring it to a higher time frame just to get this started and i'm going to go ahead actually and delete these let's just get these out of the way first let's go ahead and hide these so it doesn't look very very congested on us right here but once those are gone we'll just go with this and let's talk about the behavior that had occurred right here so on our daily chart, right, we had the large move up. We had that large three drives distribution into these lows right here into discount. We could see we were taking out lows right here, starting to move higher, taking out shorts, still holding that overall bearish narrative from a um, high right here, lower low. And then we made another lower low externally, right, from this side of this low right here, came back up, made a lower high, and then made another lower low. So until we are over this high, I'm not looking for continuation past these highs right here overall. But let's talk about how we can look to catch these type of trades on the downside right here within these areas even though our entire narrative was still bearish right down at these lows right here. So one thing with Wyckoff that um, we can start to understand in this can be applied to ICT too, right? As far as how um, premium and discount works, right? But a lot of scenarios, and when we talk about behavior with Wyckoff especially, we talk about um, accumulation within discount, manipulating lows within discount and manipulating highs within premium, right? Leaving lows. So if we're manipulating lows, leaving highs within discount and still falling an in internal bullish narrative, then we could easily still see bullish continuation higher into this area right here from this high that had caused a low right here we could easily come up still create a lower high and continue to the downside so let's talk about how we could have looked to find this within this scenario right here so as we were coming down to these lows right here and i'll just go ahead and put it in replay mode for us just just back here but as we were coming down into these lows right here we were taking out lows and starting to leave highs, right? Starting to leave that buy side liquidity that we could be seen. And even on this move to the upside right here, so if I just go ahead and play it out, just to right here, we can see that we're creating those equal highs on those lower time frames. I can bring it to a four hour and show the same thing. Yes, these equal highs that we have right here, right on this four hour chart. 
So we're starting to create some buy side liquidity within these areas right here, meaning retail is getting comfortable. The uninformed liquidity is getting comfortable shorting to the downside and placing their stop losses above these highs right here. They could easily look at this as maybe resistance, right? Maybe they think it's a flip zone if they pull it back. Whatever it is, right? This is their zone. This is the zone they have. They're setting their stop losses over that high. And the reason I can tell that is because of the equal highs that we have presented right here. We can see one, two, three, just right there. Very, very clean equal highs, understanding how that came into play. And we also talked about these supply zones right here, right? These areas of redistribution that we came down, accumulated, distributed, created supply, and moved lower. We came down, came back up into supply, and then moved lower. What happened when we got to these lows right here? We liquidated these lows to the downside, and then we saw a move to the upside. So now this is your internal strong low that caused an um, internal weak high. And the reasoning from this is because this move to the upside invalidated this supply zone right here. And as you see, when we came down right here, we had a small drop base drop, just from telling that this doji candle is a drop base drop, right? I can go to the hourly chart and show you a supply zone at this area right here, which is exactly what I will do. This is how we can start to get into those candlestick um, pattern mindsets as well because we're looking for those dojis, those consolidation areas to tell where our actual highs and lows are for the structural narrative when we're looking to take our trades. But we have a low right here that caused an internal high right here. We came down, created a redistribution, and then did that redistribution create this placement that had broken really any lows to the downside? If we look over here, this is the low that had caused this high. So still, as long as we maintain this low, we could easily see delivery into these highs right here. Mind you, we are still in discount, manipulating lows, leaving those, uh, leaving that buy side liquidity, right? So more confluence is coming into play as far as how Wyckoff can come into play. And then we can look for that four hour break of structure upside, right? Telling us that the trend has shifted and we can look for the continuation to the upside following that. So within these lows right here, as we know, this low caused this high. We can easily see delivery into this high right here. What's another confluence at these highs right here? That buy side liquidity, right? So even though we have a structural narrative coming into play as far as what we are looking for um, as a step-by-step -step basis for entry, we must understand that it is just as important for our take profits as well. If I just have a random take profit, right, based off of whatever it is, maybe it's an imbalance, maybe whatever it is, right? If I have a random take profit that's going against my rules, my plan, right? Because I have to have that structural liquidity narrative coming into play for me to be able to hold to these highs right here. Otherwise, I'm going to either take profit based off of what I like, right? Based off of what I see, based off of the money that's coming into play. And I'm like, oh, it looks good. I'm just going to take it. But the, is that really teaching me anything as far as a plan and a structural narrative? It's not, right? It's just teaching me, hey, if you like the money, take the money. And over the long term, that's not going to work out for you, right? So at these lows right here again this low caused this high right here we came back down and then right after we had this redistribution right here what did we see we saw a liquidation rate of the lows right here we maintained this low right here this institutional candle from this large move to the downside right here and then we created demand when we broke structure to the upside so that now tells me we have an area to possibly buy and we can look for the continuation into these highs right here possibly coming up to make a lower high for the continuation to the downside into those weekly 17.5, monthly 17.5 equal lows that we have been looking for, right? Once I personally believe, um, this is just my personal narrative as far as what I believe the uninformed liquidity is going to do at these lows, but if we see delivery into these lows right here, these weekly, monthly equal lows right here, then I could easily, right, you've, you've been on Twitter, you can go on um, crypto Twitter anywhere, where is everyone looking for once once we're underneath these lows, right? They want 10K, they want 9K, they want these areas down here to look to buy. So what are they going to do when price comes down here? Breakout traders, right? Downside. Stop losses over these highs. Stop losses over these highs. Stop losses over these highs, right? Because they don't want to be wrong. But us as institutional traders, us as reactors and not predictors are going to wait to see the behavior at these lows right here. Because more often than not, you will see a liquidity rate to the downside right here, a large bearish candle to the downside. 
that's going to get everybody into those shorts setting their stop losses over these highs over these highs over these highs now fueling the reason for us to uh start to have that reversal start to have that move to the upside at that point in time so us not trying to call it as it is right because let's say it does come down to these lows it breaks with displacement instead and it doesn't just show that liquidity rate to the downside that large wick to the downside followed by a bullish engulfing right instead it shows a displacement to the downside i now have a supply zone based off of that break of structure to the downside to look to take that trade off of after we come back into that and we can look to confirm it and then we can get that break and the continuation to the downside as far as this goes. And at this point in time, I can greatly increase my risk based off of that supply zone that we are going to form if it is formed, right? So we have to understand that there are multiple scenarios that can come into play, but more often than not, I am looking for that liquidity rate to the downside of that 17.5 liquidity. So uh, that that little path that I had drawn for you guys that I had showed you up into that buy side liquidity right here coming up into this area up into OTE up into this supply zone right here from this high that caused an internal low right here and then we'll look for the confirmation of that uh, this is the four hour right now so we could wait for a four hour trend shift or a one hour break of structure uh, sorry double break of structure to the downside to then show that price is starting to have that moves price is starting to show us that um, move to the downside that we want to see that delivery into these lows right here we'll be looking for these type of candles when I talk about displacement when I talk about those um, candles that stand out it's these candles right here ones that leave a large amount of imbalance because price has been pushed so quickly that orders were not able to be filled on these moves like this meaning we could expect price to come back into those areas fill those orders and then continue the structural narrative and or change the structural narrative right again we're reacting as far as how that goes but right now let's talk about what we're looking at so we had that four hour break of structure upside from that consolidation candle that we had seen right here right so where's your candle before your demand zone after the first inst uh, institutional candle mitigation so again we talk about the <clears throat> sorry one two three setup here's your first institutional candle after the liquidity rate to the downside we can see we came back tested that easily and then after we had the break of structure to the upside next you have your candle before candle as you now have created that demand and you can look for the continuation into these highs right here so now that we have come into these areas right we'll look for an, another four hour break of structure to the upside or you could even wait for an h1 following a liquidity rate for the move to the upside but we can see if we wanted to wait for that continuation at this point in time could have waited for price to switch bullish at this point right make that move up we could see that move up and then from there we saw the uh delivery into these highs right here into that buy side liquidity so retail who has been shorting here 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 right have been absolutely destroyed because what did they do again they want to be right so they place their stop losses here when they get stopped out they place it here when they get stopped out they place it here when they get stopped out they place it here right so it's the the psychology of the uninformed liquidity that is the reason that price moves the reason that there is human emotion in the market is the reason that price has these manipulations so us as institutional traders understanding that if we wait for the manipulation we can now catch that trend and hold safely right hold without worrying about um, taking out these lows right here because let's say we did take out those lows right we came into this area and we just took out those lows again now you have another opportunity so instead of trying to catch this bottom right here wait for that confirmation and then you're good to go right because these scenarios could easily happen we have seen this before where it looks like bitcoin is creating a possible creek right creating buy side liquidity and then it gets to these areas and then it just drops off right um within these scenarios you can start to catch these trades and start to maintain that comfortability instead of worrying about where price is gonna go because now you have alerts right here you have alerts at this high right here and then whichever one hits first gives you your direction right so that's what i look for every single time i have alerts at this low right here i'll, I'll have alerts at this high right here once this high is broken i'm saying okay i can long once this low is broken i'm saying okay i can short Keep it as simple as possible because um, a lot of the times, especially with institutional concepts, you'll hear so many names for so many different things. But at the end of the day, every single name is pointing to the same exact behavior. 
So if we can learn the behavior of the charts, if we can learn the candlesticks themselves, then I won't have to worry about what names or anything like that is coming into play, right? I won't have to have some type of secret formula. I'm just waiting for my narrative. So that was Bitcoin. I'm looking for delivery up into these highs right here, up into the supply zone at 21147 roughly. If we can make that move to the upside, and this is something I will let you know too, we could easily drop from here. And the reason I say that is because of the buy side liquidity that we are starting to raid. If we maintain this high, this high from this supply zone right here, we raid this buy side liquidity and break structure to the downside on the hourly with displacement, we could easily create new supply. And creating new supply could give us the reason for the continuation to the downside from here. But I personally am still looking for that move up into this area of supply. If that occurs, we'll look for the confirmation of this zone. If not, I'll set um, sorry, I'll set alerts at these lows right here. Uh, we can look at the hourly as well, 61 minute chart. Right at these lows right here, these 19.879 lows. If we get the break to the downside right there, then we can look for that lower high and look for the delivery to the downside. As you can see, we are creating a lot of sell side liquidity on this move to the upside right here. So this was Bitcoin as far as my narrative, as far as what I'm looking for. Um, this was updated from what we were looking for last time. I believe we were, we were around this area last time um, on our last stream, but at the end of the day, if we're still maintaining discount, if we're still manipulating lows and we're still breaking structure to the upside, we can look for those demand plays to look to take it to those weak highs, right? This was your weak high of that structural narrative from here. Broke structure upside, came down, created a higher low, came up, created a higher high. That's all it is at the end of the day. Impulse confirmation, right? So Bitcoin, let's go to ETH now talk about some ETH and then we'll get into XAU, we'll get into GBPNZD and then we'll get into some US30 and a little bit of NAS as well. But ETH as well, very similar story. Let's go ahead and get rid of this so we understand what I am even looking at here. But same exact thing, we're still manipulating lows. We said that we were looking for the delivery into this um, area of fair value, into this imbalance, two day imbalance, just to show you guys real quick what we're looking at. All right, that was that imbalance that I had drawn right here after that break of structure to the upside. The daily had created a supply zone right here. So this was your break of structure to the upside. You can see we came down, um, starting to mitigate that institutional candle, just showing some bounces off of it. And then at this point in time, at these areas right here, we started creating that trend line liquidity. Okay, so we created that trend line liquidity. ETH had that move up as well internal break of structure to the upside we maintain that higher low from that internal break of structure to the upside so we could easily still see continuation to the upside something i will show you again about eth as well within these areas and why i am looking for a little bit more downside than i am upside is because of these upside moves very 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 lethargic and over here i had a four hour break of structure to the upside demand candle and you can see we did not come down to mitigate that demand instead we left that fair value gap left reason to come to the downside within these areas right here but after that trend line liquidity was rated to the downside again think of that retail institutional or sorry that retail mentality let's take a breakout trade to the downside right stops over these highs right here stopped out okay I'm gonna put it over this high, stopped out, okay. Let's put it over this one, stopped out, right? So now they're just, again, giving reason for price to continue to the upside within discount as we're manipulating lows, leaving those highs that we can see here. So ETH, a little bit interesting. ETH does move more than Bitcoin does. Um, so I could easily see us take out these highs right here, fill this area of fair value um, on the four hour chart, maybe even mitigate this area of supply as well. If we mitigate that area of supply, we'll look for the confirmation, again, the lower high and the continuation into these lows right here. And I would want to see as we are coming down into these lows, into that area of fair value, price creating that buy side liquidity, manipulating those lows, creating shorts, right? Inducing retail to get into shorts at these areas right here. So if we can come down, mitigate this area right here, continue to the upside, that shows us exactly what we want. Fits my narrative as well for Bitcoin, as we're looking for that lower high to be created, and then the lower low on the weekly chart, the monthly chart, and then once that is given, then we're good to go, right? So this is ETH as far as that goes. Um, these areas at 1556, we can look at a daily chart as well. 
Yep, we're having that daily move to the upside, so we can easily see price come down to these areas right here after this breaking structure to the upside, this daily candle right here, come down, mitigate that, and then we'll see a possible move to the upside following that. Um, Wednesday, Thursday reversal is coming into play as well. I do want to check news this week, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I have it on my Chrome tab, otherwise I would slide it over for you guys to see as well. Yeah, so we went through some USD news today. We have USD news tomorrow at 15 at 10 o'clock as well. We're looking at um, not so high impact on Thursday. And then we have really, really high impact on Friday at 8.30 a.m. So a lot of news this week, meaning a lot of volatility is going to come into play. Best thing to do is wait for that manipulation of the news, right? Um, this was actually a very good example with gold today um, as far as how we can play news from an institutional perspective. But... Again, we're looking for a lower high to be created, a lower low to be formed, hopefully some equal highs as we're doing that, right? And then within these areas right here, we'll look for the reversal and look for that final, final continuation to the upside if it is given, right? So one thing too, actually, before I get into anything else, um, with ETH and with Bitcoin, I do like how long we are at these levels, meaning the amount of time that it is taken at these levels with a distribution, you usually see it happen much quicker than these ranges that we have right here. So the longer we maintain discount, continue to manipulate lows and then start to break structure upside, um, the better, right? Because uh, what it's doing is, is accumulating those orders within discount, getting people out of longs before the move, right? So that was ETH. Um, Bitcoin as well and I will I did want to show you guys this as well on Bitcoin just a quick little volume most volume we've ever had at these lows and this is just my personal take on it right but don't you think it's coincidental that now they're talking about regulation now that we're in discount and now there's more volume in Bitcoin than ever right this is how you can start to see everything start to line up as far as the world events news events and everything coming into play there right we're in discount everyone wants to short but now all of a sudden we have more volume than ever and they're talking about regulation right so we could easily see um regulation occur and then price move up higher after that right so but that was just bitcoin quick little tip that i wanted to show you guys um as far as news but we'll get into xau as well we'll talk about a few setups that came into play today and then we'll talk about what i'm looking for as well so usually on xau Monday um, is your high grab or low grab of the week, and then Tuesday is going to be continuation. So today I was looking for that continuation to the upside. Um, let's take off this volume so it doesn't mess with me. And let's talk about our structure within here. So Tuesday, continuation to the upside, right? October 4th, we're looking for that delivery to the upside for the continuation into these areas right here, right? Areas of supply and this large, large fair value gap that we have right here. Something that I wanted to point out as well, because I did post and I said I was looking for possible shorts within this area to then come down to discount again to these areas that had broke us out on a higher time frame scale. And then we could see a possible reversal from there. And I'll look for much, much higher supply zones at that point in time. But Within these areas right here on higher time frames, you don't really want to see closures in your zones. And if we look on the daily chart, right, we have a new day. We closed over these highs, right? So I could easily just come back down into these areas just internally and then continuing to the upside to take out buy side liquidity. Here was our second break of structure right here. <clears throat> so this next area of supply would be where I would look to take this um, price to. And the reasoning from that is we have a daily fair value gap right here, area of imbalance, candle before candle that had broke that structure point to the downside right here. We can look at a two day chart as well, that area of supply that we can see. So this would be the area that I would want to short if I want to short. Personally, I'm more long oriented. We've been talking about this for months now, coming down into this weekly rally based rally within discount. I mean, look at that weekly candle as well, right? So. Best not to call those tops, best not to call those bottoms, right? Let's play the chart as it comes to us, as the um, narrative starts to come into play. And remember, overall, this is the low that had caused this high. So this high could get taken out. And if I look at this, let's draw this across, flat, right? We have buy side liquidity. So I'm not saying this will happen. 
right? Obviously, we need to pass these supply zones, pass these supply zones, pass this supply zone before I'm looking for delivery up into these highs right here. But overall, if we just take it from a simple logical perspective, I don't know why it's saying that, but simple logical perspective, higher high, higher low, higher high, right? That's it at the end of the day. I'm just looking at the same thing on a higher time frame scale as I would be on a hourly chart, as I would be on a 15 minute chart, five minute, one minute, so on, right? So with XAU, I am looking for delivery higher overall, but I could easily see us come even into these areas, these 1770 areas as far as that goes. But Wednesday and Thursday, we usually see that midweek reversal for what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my lower time frames and show what that could look like, right? So two options that we have here. One, we either take out the supply zone, come into these areas, uh, manipulate highs and continue to the downside from there into areas of discount that had broken structure to the upside here. From here, we'll look to long or two, we hold this, right? We respect this. And then on the hourly time frame, we show a large break of structure to the downside with displacement. And we can, again, look for the delivery into these areas lower. So I'm going to be watching um, this area right here that we are at, sorry, at right now. And then I will be watching that higher time frame area of supply as well over here. We saw we came up, had one mitigation of that. So I can easily see these equal highs, right? This buy side liquidity we can see formed on this move right here, ran to the upside. Once it's ran, um, we can mitigate that area of supply and then have a move to the downside from then. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday is going to show that mid reversal as far as that goes. So <clears throat> apologies, this was XAU. What I was looking for for XAU entries and exits will be called um, as far as this goes, I didn't want to be trigger happy as far as jumping the gun on these shorts right here because I am more long oriented overall. I would way rather catch the continuation longs to the upside than I would try to catch a top, right? So that's XAU. I want to get into GBP NZD as well. We do have some news coming out in about hour and a half. Yeah, hour and a half from now, about nine o'clock Eastern. Um, again, with that mid -week reversal as well, we could possibly see and move to the downside from here. So with GBP NZD, we talked about how we were looking for shorts, right? Uh, since, since these areas over here, we had that um, monthly area of supply, that monthly drop base drop created supply, broke structure to the downside. We came up, we mitigated that, broke more structure to the downside. We came up, we mitigated that, broke more structure to the downside. And now we're up, we're mitigating. We took out some highs and we could possibly continue to the downside from here as we've created some equal lows and our overall structure is still bearish, right? So many look at this and say, well, didn't the monthly break structure to the upside at these lows right here? right? That has to be confirmed down at these areas of demand, which presents us with a beautiful, beautiful short opportunity coming into play. Meaning, shorting at these highs right here, following our bearish narrative and continuing to the downside, we can take profit at these areas right here at first for um, to maintain protected if it comes down here, mitigates these areas, right? Break structure to the upside after showing that Wyckoff accumulation within these zones. If it doesn't show that and continues to the downside, profit. That's all it is, right? So we don't need to know what's going to happen at these lows right here. Instead, we'll play the structural narrative into this area of demand, and then we'll watch the behavior as it occurs right there. But GBP NCD, again, I was talking about the news that we are starting to have, starting to get into play here at 9 o'clock tonight, Eastern, so a few hours here. Into Tokyo as well. GBP NCD likes to move during Tokyo, and GBP NCD likes to move during uh, London for those who had wanted to trade it or wanted to look for swings on this type of pair. I personally love to swing on this pair. Um, I'm not really trading any scalps or intraday as far as GBP NCD goes, just because of the spreads. Personally, uh, it does have higher spreads, so if I'm holding um, a GBP NCD long or short, I'm going to be holding it for a while to account for that. So. Again, within these areas right here, if we are looking for areas of supply, you can see I had one marked right here on this move to the downside. Obviously, it still held this higher low and then no confirmation within this zone right here. But 
we have a possible Wyckoff um, scenario setting up, right? That PSY um, buys climax, right? We come back down, make the UT, come back up, make the sign of weakness. We can see the equal lows right here and a possible UTAD within this area as well. We are in that weekly supply, but we can look for some higher time frame confluence as well. A daily breakdown to show that the weekly and the monthly ones to pull back. Once that occurs, we can look for that delivery lower. GBP NCD offers many, 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 many pips. We can, I mean, even on this move right here, I think this was a day or two, you're looking at literally 12K pips on this move to the upside right here. So we don't need to worry about catching the entire move, right? Even down here, 6,000, 5,000 pips, right? Within these areas right here. And you're just sitting there like, well, that is going to make a lot of profit whether or not, right, you have super small stop losses. So... Understanding that GBP NZD likes to move the way she does, um, likes to retrace a lot of moves. That's something I will let you guys know of as well. She likes to retrace a lot of moves. So I am looking for a retracement Wednesday, Thursday, weekly reversal into these areas right here. It could even mitigate this area of demand after taking out these lows. So this is going to be my first take profit as far as where I'm going to look to take this to the downside. And then secondly, we can look for these areas down here and then the overall low that we have created right here to fill that weekly, monthly wick that we have seen right here with the structural narrative and with the liquidity that we have right here. Um, I can look at this sentiment as well real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll see what we're looking at as far as the sentiment on GBP NZD. Okay, so we're net 60% short, net 40% long. So there are more shorts than there are longs right now so we could easily see that manipulation to the upside before continuation to the downside or we could see a little distribution to then accumulation within these areas mitigate that area of demand and continuation to the upside so instead of this we see this price comes up fills these areas mitigates that area of supply comes back down distributes to then accumulates we have a reaccumulation occurring and then we see continuation to the upside. But until that occurs, I'm not going to look for that upside, right? These moves can bring a lot of inducement, a lot of um, just inducement, a lot of retail getting into these uh, trades, trying to take these continuously to the upside because they think it's just going to go, right? They're trading based off of gravity, based off of whatever it is. But we're looking at it as that institutional perspective from then premium. And let's just draw this out. We could do this high to this low or even this side of this low right here, right, as far as the um, liquidity goes, but even if we took it down to these lows, let's just have that out there. As we come back into premium, and let's just make this the premium and discount one for y'all. Mm, turn that around. This low to this high. Right, as we're coming up into that area of premium, we'll look for price to come back into discount, back into demand if we wanted to take this to the upside, right? So I am looking at a little bit of um, same scenario as far as gold, where it's going to be a short to long scenario after we come down, manipulate lows, break structure to the upside for GBP NZD. So I'm going to wait for a daily break of structure to the downside to call that weekly pullback. Uh, again, that news is coming out in about an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to wait for that to go as far as Tokyo setups, anything like that. Wait for the manipulation. Once the manipulation occurs, I'll wait for the displacement, whether it's upside or downside, and then I can look to take the trade from there. So that was GBP NZD. We'll get into some US 30 now, and then I will also check if there's any questions or anything like that that anyone has asked me. You guys feel free to unmute your mic at any time during the stream. You can interrupt me if you guys have questions, if you have charts that you want me to look at. Um, after I do US 30, we'll probably have about 10 to 15 minutes or so that we could look at some charts if you guys have any charts or anything like that you want me to look at if not that's perfectly fine as well i will be posting all of these sentiments gbp nzd us 30 bitcoin eth they will all be posted um for everyone who is looking for that in lessons and we'll look to play it from there so gbp nzd um xau usd we talked about bitcoin we talked about eth let's go ahead and get into some us 30 now all right, so, <clears throat> and let's just get rid of this, because this is a new layout, so we can just go ahead and delete all of that, have a clean little chart right here. Look at my mentions real quick. 
Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So, let's talk about US 30. Let's talk about the behavior that had occurred and again, why retail was shorting. So kind of using that same type of narrative, that same type of uh, behavior that we were talking about with Bitcoin at those lows, right? Where retail is continuously shorting to the downside, same thing here. Look at this weekly for value gap. We have this weekly area um, of imbalance, right? I was looking at this institutional candle right here that can easily um, be mitigated after we come up to these highs, continue to the downside, right? But we came down, filled this area of weekly imbalance, took out these lows right here. And again, that fueled the liquidity for us to now make that move to the upside. We had a weekly imbalance that was right here. And then we looked for the move, the delivery into that area <clears throat> following that liquidity rate to the downside as during the week, right? And this is just um, basic logic as far as how we can not be maintained in a same exact bias over and over and over again. But this is your weekly chart, right? We saw the move to the downside, these lows that were being taken out right here. So again, using that same type of logic that we were talking about with Bitcoin, what are you doing at these lows, right? As a retail, as an um, uninformed trader, right? You're taking this to the downside. You're taking it all the way down here, taking it to maybe these lows, taking it to these lows right here. Once this breaks to the downside because you're playing based off of gravity, right? When that's not how we were looking to trade. Instead, as institutional traders, we can look at this and say, okay, this is the low that had caused this high following a liquidity rate to the downside and a break of structure to the upside. So this is that area of demand. We came back in to discount, right? We can see we actually mitigated that. Yeah, we mitigated that area of demand, I believe. Um, but not fully. I do want more delivery into it as well. But as we're in discount, again, taking out lows, taking out longs from November of 2020, right? What is retail doing? They're shorting it to the downside. And then what did we create on this move to the downside as well? This fair value gap. This area of imbalance, an area where there was not enough orders to be filled. So now that we have had that move to the downside, the delivery to the downside underneath these lows right here, we now have reason to come up as well. So if we watch our lower time frame structure within those areas, four hour, one hour, uh, well, wait, we could even call the one hour at these areas right here, right? And the reason I say that is because a one hour is going to put in your four hour pullback, meaning... Once we have that one hour break of structure to the upside, your four hour will begin to pull back. If we go on the four hour, where's an area of supply that we could have looked to take this to the downside with an imbalance, right? See any imbalances? No. Imbalances? No. Imbalances? No. Imbalance, right? Imbalance. So this is that swing move that we were looking for for the delivery into these areas of supply versus these areas down here. And you could even draw it out from this low to this high or even this low to this high right and you can see that we're still maintaining that discount as far as these lows right here and once we had manipulated those lows to the downside took out those lows within our zone because again what do we talk about with these zones there's billions and billions and billions of um, people trading this right there's billions and billions of money in this market so you can see a lot of the times a lot of people are looking at the same zones right a lot of people are looking at this this imbalance um as you see beginning pretty popular right so a lot of people will get lazy and say oh well i'll just set limits at the zone and then i'll walk away right so they set limits right here they set limits right here and then what's the market gonna do it's gonna make you think you're right so market came down into here it mitigated this area and then it saw a large move off of it right or not not really a large move but it saw a move off of it right did we get any break of structures with impulse after liquidation rate to the downside? No, we did not. We can see we still maintain this high that had caused this low right here. Broke structure to the downside so we can see the delivery lower. Once that occurred, we did that, right? And then this was that area where most of you might have been like, well, this is where it happens, right? This is where I could get that break of structure to the upside. We mitigated the 50%. Maybe you some, some of you are a little bit more patient, right? And you were looking for the delivery as far as that goes. But on the hourly chart we came up to these highs right here still held this high this internal high that had caused this low right here so all we did was take out these highs right here still hold this high that had caused this low create a lower high so we are looking for a lower low instead of looking for that demand because it is not fully there yet but after we had taken out these lows right here we 
made that area of supply right here. That's what's most important because after we had taken out these lows, we created a area of supply and then invalidated that. Broke that structure point to the upside. There's your impulsive candle on this move right here. And then we look for the delivery back into these areas. Look for that liquidation rate on lower time frames. Another break of structure to the upside. And then we could have looked to take our trades right here. Then targeting the buy side liquidity as well as that supply zone that we have over here. So instead of being taken out of your bias right and this is something too the entire week last week right um one two three four five six seven yeah within these areas right here what were we doing the entire time down 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 right so when it gets easy to retail and they're just saying hey we've been going down for the past week we broke these lows let's just continue down from here so again what do they do they short but we are looking for those areas, again, in discount, looking for the break of structures. Uh, this is a daily chart now. I do like how this is setting up within these areas right here. Um, for the delivery down into these lows, maybe we even liquidate these lows, come down to that institutional candle, depending on our reaction at these levels right here. Meaning, if we come down to discount and don't mitigate supply and instead manipulate lows within these areas right here, I'll be way more long-oriented than I will if we just continue up from here into these areas, into this fair value gap as well, and then start to show the manipulation of highs. Then again, I will look for the move to the downside from there into that institutional candle instead of that fair value gap. If if I see the move into the institutional candle, I will be, again, more long-oriented as well, because normally with fair value gaps and normally with um, imbalance candles, they only put in a pullback and not a break of structure as far as a new demand or new supply, right? So we look for the IC creation, IC, and then we look for the break of structure. Mitigation of the IC occurs right here. Mitigation, break of structure, demand is within here. Right? So that's where I would look for demand instead of demand right here, demand right here, demand right here, because that's your institutional candle, that's your liquidation rate to the downside. Right, We have to still confirm that lower um, high or that higher low that is coming into play as far as that goes. Uh, so that was US 30. That was the indices is what I'm looking for. Um, I did see Playboy posting some charts as well, starting to come out with some alts, um, which is starting to get exciting. But again, until Bitcoin and ETH are starting to make that move personally, I'm not going to be looking for um, a lot of altcoins. If I am trading alts, it's going to be top tens as they hold the most liquidity and liquidity concepts, uh, manipulation concepts is what I base my style off of right so uh is there any questions or anything like that that anyone had about any of these charts anything that we had gone through today um if not that is perfectly fine as well like i said i will be posting this to youtube following this was recorded um we'll talk about gvp nzd as it comes into play as well and all of these setups will be posted after this is over um so if there are any questions or anything like that that's perfectly fine um, if you're starting to understand this, if we're starting to get into that one hive mind where we're just looking for that same exact thing over again, then beautiful, right? That's how it should be at the at this point in time, especially when I'm getting up here, you know, every Thursday, every, every Tuesday, um, saying the same things over and over again. I hope I have drilled it into your guys' brains. I hope I'm starting to get annoying to you, right? And that's how it should be as far as um, what we are looking at because from that perspective, from that narrative that we have every single time, if we can continue to maintain it and continue to follow that, then we will see that profitability that we are looking for at the end of the day. So that's what I'm going to do every Tuesday and every Thursday and every Sunday as well. I'm going to get up there and I'm going to repeat the same things over and over again because nothing has changed and nothing will change. The reason I say nothing will change is because as long as there's human emotion in the markets, you will continue to see manipulation. These concepts will come to play over and over and over and over again. There's always that bigger fish out there ahead of you right and that's why we recognize the billions and billions and billions of dollars that flow into this market in and out every single day right so maintain that patience maintain that um ability to wait for these setups to come into play we could come back down into this fair value gap after taking out these highs right here mitigating this area and then possibly continuing to the upside right getting a lot of um a lot of scenarios into your head as well. So saying it could do this, 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 or this, meaning I don't have to be right. I don't have to worry about if it just does this or if it just does that, right? Again, waiting just for the narrative to come into play, your setup to come into play, and then you are good to go. But as far as XAU goes, 
We could see a possible, possible, possible reversal within these areas right here, but I say possible and I say it like I say it because of that daily close that we had at these highs right here. It has looked like it is drawing toward that liquidity to the upside right here, this buy side right here, into this area of supply that had broken us down. We can see where the entries came from um, on this short to the downside right here into these lows. We've talked about these shorts coming into play. So um, something too that can help you out as far as supply and demand and what we're looking for. If you've noticed on this move to the downside right here, when we broke structure to the downside right here and created that area of supply, I had, a, I had marked a supply zone. And we'll go ahead and put this back. And this was during um, this move right here. I had marked the supply zone on this move to the downside right here. And you can see that we didn't actually come back up and create that lower high and then continue to the downside. It was all internal within this move right here. So we could easily see price come back into these areas of supply or come back into this area of supply um, before the continuation to the downside. So that will start to help you out as well as what zones are going to be mitigated and why they should be mitigated as you can now start to figure out what you have left behind, right? Like within this scenario right here, if I had a demand zone right here and it just shot up and I still had that marked demand zone, we could easily still see price come down to that demand zone if it doesn't break this high right here, right? Um, <clears throat> so keeping that narrative in play is going to be very, very, very helpful uh, with your mentality, with your trading and with your setups in general, because I mean, almost all the time, right? Every single trader out there wants to find the best. They want to find the best strategy. They want to find the easiest thing, right? So make it simple to you, make it easy to you, and then it will be the best because now you're comfortable with it. You can trade when you want to trade. You can trade for five to 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, right? 30 minutes a day even. And that could be your one to two trades for the week or one to two trades for the month, depending on how you look to hold your positions, right? But instead maintaining that ability that we know what we're looking for we know that setups are coming into play and that once it does then we're good to go it's going to help us tons tons so we got about eight more minutes um eight more minutes left in stream here any questions or anything like that uh, i'll go ahead and look at some mentions i think i had one in crypto chat oh irb he's talking about he said it uh, it took a long time for me to fully grasp all time frame signing up. Streams have helped so much. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Can you take a look at what I have here on XRP? Took profits at 5R already. Very happy with this setup. Beautiful, beautiful trade, brother. Beautiful trade. Uh, I'll take a look on um, on here right now. Beautiful setup, though. I really like the way that was executed. Well done, well done. Let's go to um, XRP. I think I have it in this yes 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 okay that was a beautiful setup brother um i do like delivery into these highs right here it's looking like this is the weak high that 0.5126 area right here the reason i say this is um from this move this delivery on this demand zone right here we saw that move up we came back into discount we can see we mitigated this area that rally base rally that had occurred right here we saw the delivery beautiful beautiful um as far as that setup went into play uh, this entire xrp chart was actually actually beautiful i love love the way this played out but um a lot of volume on this coin too so institutional liquidity is definitely there um so xrp is a good asset to trade if you are looking for an alt to trade with these institutional concepts but we can see we came back into discount, saw that break of structure to the upside, came into that area of demand, IRB. I'm sure that's what you were looking for on this delivery right here. And then we had that break of structure here. You were looking to enter around here, I believe. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Well done as far as that goes. I would look for the delivery into these highs right here. The only thing I would say is that internally, this high had caused this low right here. So if we can maintain this high and break structure to the downside from these moves right here. So I would say like if this low gets taken out, um, then you can easily see delivery back lower into these areas of demand. But overall, I do like how this is setting up. Um, we can look at the daily chart as well. Yeah, it does look like the draw on liquidity is definitely towards these highs. I, I did want to see the supply zone mitigated more than it was mitigated as well. Meaning once I had that first mitigation, limit orders are open. So I wait for the liquidation of those limit orders. Overall, this is your uh, weak high right here, but internally this is where I would look for that 0.51 I believe 
yeah, 0.5108, that um, high right there for the next take profit, and then you can hold to that weak high take profit of that 0.5589 area. But beautiful trade, beautifully executed. Um, love the way that happened, brother. And then same thing over here too, as far as accumulation, something that we can look at, right? Even though this is the internal low that had caused this internal high, we maintain that area of discount, came back uh, down to that institutional candle, showed that impulsive break of structure to the upside, came back down into that area of demand, and then we had the move past all of that buy side liquidity that we were talking about that build up that uh sir trades a lot was talking about that we were looking at right um that we had marked on the stream a couple weeks ago so xrp beautiful delivery beautiful execution as well rb um i would look for that delivery into this week high right here overall it is starting to look a little lethargic right but at the end of the day we're looking for the continuation as long as it main as long as it maintains higher lows right so i would look for a break of structure downside here if i wanted to stop out or break even within this scenario um again well executed uh, is there any other questions or anything like that that anybody has? I hope that answered your question, IRB, as far as what you're looking for. Um, if there isn't any... No problem, no problem. If there isn't any other questions or anything like that, then um, we can go ahead and... Um, take a look at some... Um, I think it was ADA I wanted to look at, too. Yeah, take a look at some other alts here. It is finally delivering into those weekly lows right here. Yeah, setting up as well. Okay, so ADA was another one that I wanted to show you guys before the entire expansion move had occurred. <clears throat> this is just based off of structure. This is just based off of um, supply and demand and then Wyckoff as well. So again, same exact thing over here. We can see that XAU, or sorry, not XAU, ADA is starting to create that buy side liquidity on this move to the downside right here. Obviously, the weekly is still bearish, so I can easily see these lows taken out. Everyone's going to start to short even though we still maintain this higher low right here and then we can continue to the upside from there um uh, last sense i can answer that question real quick uh low leverage personally recommended five to ten times and the reasoning from that one is because of fees and twos um is because of the the risk that you can maintain on that trade you're only going to be want to be risking personally for prop firms I'm looking at 0.5 to 1%. 1% if I'm super convicted, 0.5% um, if it is different. But you're going to want to stay on that 5 times uh, to 10 times for sure as far as that goes. Um, don't be risking too much. You're going to want to have that. I mean, personal accounts, I had it as 1% to 5% risk just because I would risk it a little bit more on my personal accounts than I would on my funded accounts, right? Obviously, a 5% account um, is going to be a blowout within a day as you can't lose 5% in a day, right? So with um, crypto and with these Binance ports and with Bybit ports, um, I do tend to risk a little bit more as far as that goes. But at the end of the day, we're still looking for low risk and you don't want to be uh, clapped on those fees as well. So that one to five times, um, oh yeah, Playboy said one to five times, perfect, perfect. Um, as far as what you're looking for, for that low leverage. Uh, is there any other questions or anything like that? I'm probably gonna end the stream here in about a minute, two minutes. Um, if not, that's perfectly fine as well. Again, this was recorded and will be posted to YouTube after. And then all of these um, narratives that we had talked about today for anyone who wasn't here or anyone who wasn't able to hear the whole thing, um, I'm going to go ahead and post those as well for everybody. I'll lay it out for you all. So again, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who had come out. appreciate everybody who had joined. Um, at the end of the day... <laughs> I need you at the end. I need you at the end of every stream doing that. <laughs> the little disclaimer at the end. Love it, love it. Well, again, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all popping out. Uh, I'll check stream chat real quick. Oh, Neo, please. Can it come down into a premium into 8.71? I got you, Global Vibing. We'll take a look at Neo real quick. And then after Neo, we'll go ahead and uh, get off here. So, I think it's in this one. Yeah. Neo, 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 Neo. Here you are. It's been a long time since I've looked at Neo, man. Um, I think this is the perp chart. Is this a perp chart? Yeah, this is a perp chart. Let's look at the um, USDT chart here. Okay. Yeah, this looks a little better than that perp chart did. So, Neo's interesting. 
it was very interesting. A lot, a lot of these altcoins are going to be looking like this. Um, and something too with most of these altcoins, and I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, but I will say that 90 to 95 percent of altcoins that you see out there are going to be um, illiquid, meaning they're pretty much useless. And the reasoning for that is just because of no world no real world use no actual utilization no need for them and instead it seemed like more of a way to make money right whether it was pumps dumps whatever that was but let's just talk about the neo structure within these areas right here we are maintaining actually this low from this liquidity rate to the downside that had caused this move to the upside right here this is your weekly chart let's go ahead and go to the daily now i believe global vibing was looking for nine dollars yeah yeah, I do see that. Um, the reason I do see that is because we created this low right here, came back down, mitigated this institutional candle that caused this internal breakage structure to the upside right here. We came back down here, came up, mitigated that area of supply, came back down, then broke structure to the upside. I would look at this um, 8.74 area for possible buys for continuation into these highs right here, this 9.66 high. We could see one of two things occur here. We take out these highs. We still hold that supply and we continue to the downside or we move for higher time frame supply within these areas right here from this break of structure to the downside displacement area of supply 11.02 around these areas right here. Um, I'll check my mentions. No problem. No problem. Uh, last sensei. But yeah, so that was pretty much everything I had for you guys today. I appreciate it again. Everybody popping out was recorded. I'm going to go ahead and post those. Um, clips up or sorry not the clips the uh, charts up as well for you guys at the end here and we'll be watching gbpncd into that nine o'clock 9 p.m news as far as that goes if not i'll be waiting for london or even new york but again thank you everybody who had popped out um yeah no problem global but no no problem thanks again and I hope all of you guys have a great rest of your day and or night. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that that you want to get at me for, anything that um, you either didn't understand or would like to know more of, maybe some information, some whatever it is, right? Just let me know. You can DM me, at me anywhere. But again, thanks to everybody who had popped out, was recorded. I will catch all of you guys later. Peace, peace.